Well, it gives them back the ability to walk, maybe walk normal, walk up and down stairs for many patients for the first time in years. And while many of us take that for granted, for those who have had that ability taken away from them, it is life-changing. So for me, it's tremendously rewarding to give them that opportunity. Well, that's my job. I mean, my job is to help patients who, uh, in many cases, were normal at one time and have had that, that taken away from them. I mean, I want to help them recover as much of their function and normal life as possible, and walk aid is a big part of that. My name is Dr. Joe Urquidez. I'm a board-certified physical medicine and rehabilitation physician. I'm also fellowship trained in neurorehabilitation. When people say the term uh, foot drop, uh, essentially what they're alluding to is the fact that patients have difficulty raising their foot. And while that can occur from a couple different reasons, either damage to the nervous system peripherally, uh, most commonly, and this is what we're alluding to when we talk about foot drop, uh, it's due to an injury to the brain or the spinal cord. Foot drop doesn't seem like a big deal, certainly poses a very big fall risk for patients, and therefore that's why we want to treat it. Well, WalkAid is nice in that uh, it promotes neuromotor recovery. Because it's an FES device, it is allowing patients to get that stimulation and encourage that recovery to come back. In addition to that, it's also promoting a normal gait pattern. Because of the tilt sensor, we're getting good timing of foot uh, dorsiflexion as well as push-off, uh, as well as preventing any abnormal hip hike, circumduction, and so forth. Well, I think it's incredibly liberating for a patient to get out of their big bulky brace a lot of times and be able to walk barefoot for the first time, be able to wear flip-flops. Uh, my young patients, you know, love the fact that they're not stuck with having to buy two different shoes. I got a, a big shoe for my brace side and my normal shoe for my other side. And, and just putting on an AFO is, is difficult. And so for them to have to leave all that behind and feel more normal is just tremendous for them. With a walk aid and establishing you know, better gait, a lot of them can go do the activities that they used to do, and that's, that's important for them. Many of them can't even walk uh, when they're barefoot, but when we put a walk aid on them, program it appropriately, fit it appropriately, now they can walk barefoot for many of them for the first time and that is a tremendous experience. And some patients go from maybe walking to walking faster, going up and down stairs, something that many of them struggle with. So this is a, an experience that uh, is tremendous for them and, and in many cases life-changing. There's one uh, gentleman in particular a uh, 40-something-year-old uh, gentleman who was very active, a uh, big runner, and he was out running one day and suffered a stroke. I mean, I think it's been about a couple years now, and he's been using uh, walk aid for several months, and just the other week, he ran for the first time. And for him to have come full circle is just amazing, in my opinion to be able to put on a device, a device that's much easier to put on than an AFO, and be mobile in whatever footwear or no footwear uh, is incredibly liberating for them. I think using a device like the walk aid early on gives a lot of opportunities uh, to the therapists and patients. And I say that because the earlier we treat a patient, the better. We avoid abnormal gait patterns. In addition, what therapists are using a walk aid for is because it has an exercise mode, we can use it in two different ways, essentially. We use it to help establish normal gait. We can also use it to promote neuromotor recovery in the exercise mode. So having those two different modalities gives therapists an ability to help patients recover and recover much faster than they would have without it. Well, at this time, uh, there's essentially two different uh, FES systems uh, available. 
And while both of them are reasonable systems, in my opinion, the Walk 8 is a superior system. Outside of my opinion, just in terms of my patients, I think they appreciate the fact that there's less hardware involved, the fact that the Walk 8 is easier to put on. And so from a practical standpoint, it makes more sense for them. From a medical standpoint, I appreciate the fact that the technology, in my opinion, is superior and helps establish a better gait. I also like the fact that looking down the road, I think Walk 8 has a tremendous upside. And for the, all those reasons, I think it's, it's definitely a better device. Everyone's in a different financial situation. But if a patient is getting a good result from the walk-in, and many of them do, I think that they can understand and rationalize the cost. And it's not the cost of a vehicle. While it is a significant financial responsibility, I think many of them say to themselves, look, this has given me the opportunity to do things I couldn't do before. I'm going to find a way to pay. And many times that's, that's the case. If they have a significant result, yeah, you could say it's sort of necessity. I mean, with it I can walk, without it I can't walk. So I, I guess for that particular patient, it is somewhat of a necessity. I think if you're in the medical field, your goal is to help patients. And given my particular specialty, that's what I relish, is uh, getting patients back as much as possible to where they were. And being able to walk is a big part of that and walk aids a big part of that. That's what I relish about my job and when I can accomplish that, it's just tremendously gratifying for me.